Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I've been working pretty hard uh, the last couple of nights. Got this bad boy running, well temporarily at least. Um, I'll show you a little bit about the controls right here. So first thing, this is our temperature gauge. So this goes directly behind the uh, stepper drivers, so I know the temperature right now is pretty cold, 14.6 degrees C. And actually this has a built-in um, relay in it and it can go to set points. So I'm, I'll show you right now actually, this button here, this switch, turns the fans on. But it's on all the time, so I might actually run it through the relay in here so that it turns on and off. And this, I have the fans uh, on three separate speeds. So you can probably hear them pick up. And actually during the course of this video, so right now we're at 14.5 degrees. We're gonna run it on high, we'll see if that drops. Um, right here, this is the voltage coming from one of our power supply units. And it's actually a health voltage. So 5.2, uh, five, 5 volts is the healthy voltage. So if it reads anything other than that, I know there's a problem with my one of my main power supplies. This is an, a fan, I just made a little grate here for it so I won't get my fingers in there, but it blows air out and this one sucks, sucks air into the panel. And you want your, the air going out at the top because hot air rises so you want all that air to escape. Here is the uh, uh, on switch, so when you push this button every, everything's going to turn on, you'll get a green light indicating that everything is on push the e-stop, red light's gonna turn on. Now it's not working right now because we haven't programmed the PLC. Uh, right now I have it tricked to be on. And red light will be on all the time when the system is off. Now over here, this is a toggle switch. So it can trigger um, either my wood router or enable the stepper drivers. Uh, just as an emergency, not an emergency, just sort of an extra switch in there. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to use it for, but it's there anyways and it's going to the PLC. Um, it'll have a red indicator light on here and the red indicator light will just is another uh, fail safe that lets me know that the PLC is working because it's hooked up to the PLC. And then finally this is a yellow light here. Um, not really sure what I'm going to use it for. I have it just disabled right now, but it's there for, as a spare. So actually, as you can see, the temperature's dropped almost uh, half a degree since these fans have been running, so it might be a little overkill, I'm not sure. Now on the side here, here's another fan, and it's also sucking in. So I have positive pressure inside the case. This little board here, I'm gonna run my uh, parallel, uh, parallel port card through there, or my parallel cable through there. And here, here's where I'm gonna put, um, my plugins, I call them aviation plugs, you get them on Amazon for 10 bucks Canadian or something. Anyways, so these are all going to go here and I'm going to have uh, three for my XYZ and then three for my limit switches. So inside the panel, so it actually dropped almost one degree since turning it on. I believe the fan's running. Inside the panel, turn it towards the light here. So here's all the wiring behind the scenes. Uh, here's your on, uh, on button. Here's your e-stop, the lights, fans here. Obviously no guards on the inside. And here's just the back of the switch and everything. And as I, I'm waiting for more parts actually, I'm waiting for my breakout board and my 48 volts DC power supply. So hopefully they come in soon. So here are my stepper motor drivers. Uh, I wanted to put them a lot of people say you should keep all the heat sink, uh, keep it as much exposed to the air as possible. I've actually raised it up on this piece of wood, so half of it's exposed, and with the fans, I don't think I'll have a heating problem. Another thing with this is I want to um, see, read where I'm putting uh, my wires into. If, it's, if these were tilted up, I wouldn't be able to read that. These are just uh, ground, go right to the earth ground. Um, mainly because I want to reduce noise and the back panel is wood, not metal, so it's not really grounded to anything there. Down here, I haven't had it wired in yet, but this is a um, 
volt meter and amp meter and that will be connected to my main power supply which is the 48 volts uh, DC so if this is reading anything other than 48 um, we have a problem and the amperage I'm just gonna have it go into my largest stepper motor just to see how many amps we have going into this stepper driver actually it'll be going uh, it'll be going right there into VCC um, so that's just for curiosity's sakes here we have the old Allen Bradley Micrologics 1000. I uh, can't really do much with it. I only have six inputs and four outputs. So uh, the inputs here are my on push button, my E stop, and that toggle switch I talked about on the front. And coming out, I have uh, just a relay that's going to connect, which will turn on my computer supply unit. And another um, lead is going to go to the E stop warning light. Uh, e stop to my breakout board and an enable. So that's probably what I'll hook that toggle switch up to. Here I've just got a 10 amp fuse. That's probably going to be going to my to this uh, PLC and the power supply because the power supply converts 120 volts AC to to DC. So I'm just going to protect that. There's actually three more fuses coming. One for each of the stepper drivers. Uh, this is a ABB contactor. Uh, right now it turns on when the green push button is switched, uh, pushed on, and I have a light, the green light in the front is actually running through this, so when I get green light I know that this relay is contacted and it's working fine. In this corner over here, in the middle here, this is a VFD, and that's going to be for future use. I'm not going to wire it in directly yet until I learn a little bit more about it. And I've keeping, I'm keeping it away, away from the stepper motor drivers just so there's no noise or interference. Uh, same thing with the PLC as well. Now up here, this is a neat little trick. Uh, I read it online somewhere. You actually take the PSU, uh, power supply unit, out of an old computer and you get 12 volts DC, 5.5, 3.3, negative 12, negative 5, and uh, there's the health signal there. Um, Purple is standby, and I think white is negative five. <clears throat> anyway, so you get just put a little uh, terminal block in there, and you can get all these power supplies um, and different voltages for whatever you need. So for my fans, I have I'm running uh, 12, 15, and 24. And then this is a DC uh, ground bus there, so all my DC components are going to be grounded there. Um, as you can see, I'm using the 12 and 5 volts a lot here, and the negative 12 because to get 24. What did you mean by 12, 15, and 24? Aren't they all running off of 12 volts? No your voltages. I, so the like your fans. Yeah, the fans are running off. When I switch the, the toggle switch, it goes from uh, 12 volts, I think 15 volts, and then. 24. Oh, That's why okay. I, I can get variable yeah, yeah. speed, variable right? Speed. Instead of I using a, a potentiometer, and so each color is a different uh, different voltage, and then it just gets everything just gets grounded back to the DC bus or or DC ground bar. I mean, so that's what I have for the panel. Um, I'll probably do a final panel video once I get the fuses, the breakout board, and the power supply unit. So a lot of room in this panel. Um, Pretty, pretty happy so far. Once I get the uh, the cable track, whatever cable tray uh, covers on, it's gonna look pretty neat. So, other updates. Now, Connor, did you really need to use a Micrologix 1000 and ABB contactors for well, this application? You probably, you could definitely get away without using it. I, uh, I over-engineered it. But I got a buddy who works at Rockwell Automation, so he'll, <laughs> he'll appreciate that. Um, and like I said, I have it. I'm never going to use it for anything else. And I'm just going to play around and see if we can have some fun with it. Very good. So over here, um, in my first video, uh, part one, the design, I talked about with this motor mount. I didn't know what I was going to do, so I actually made one on the weekend. Just a piece of HSS 1x2, a couple steel mounting plates, and then... Um, just a piece of wood there, so that's pretty solid on there. I don't want to snap the wood. I might, when I get the mill running, I might make this these pieces out of aluminum. Now another thing I did was 
I made a little clip here to hold this, these aviation plugs. So I can actually take my cord, come in here, and unplug the system if I need to disassemble. Just easier to take the motor away that way. And with these plugs, you want them coming in horizontally. You do not want them up like this or turn like that because when you're cutting, first thing that's going to happen, that's going to fill with metal. You're going to have problems. That's going to fill with wood. You're going to have problems. So you always mount plugs or anything, limit switches, um, anything to do with a plug is always horizontal so nothing falls in there. And one, another final tip here is I got the, uh, the through shaft stepper motors. So I'm, I'm going to mill a handle so I can crank this and manually move the mill without having to turn it on. And right now during the, during the assembly I can actually hook my drill up to there and move this system or move the gantry pretty easily. So up here, same thing, same idea. This is actually an 8 wire stepper motor so I had to bring two wires to one pin because there's only four pins. Um, Pretty simple, just some heat shrink on there, kind of cleaned it up real nice. And then finally down here is the last one. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, maybe it'll help one of you guys out in the future if you want to do something or give you some ideas. Uh, oh, and don't ask for drawings or anything because I just it's just coming out of my head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just work at it one wire at a time. All right. Then, see you next time.